Hey guys, before this review starts, I just want to let you know that this was recorded right as I finished the game, right after rolling credits. I streamed it on YouTube and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Rex Sterling. So if you want to come to any of the streams, I'm probably still streaming Final Fantasy right now, pretty much every day right now at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I try to avoid spoilers in this. I think I do a pretty decent job of, of like dancing around, uh, you know, story beats that are important, bosses that are important things like that. I do my best to avoid any kind of spoilers in case you haven't played Final Fantasy X. However, my, you know, streamer and my chat is on the screen. If you really want to avoid spoilers and just hear what I thought my first time playing through this game, as soon as the game ended, it's very fresh. Um, then yeah, I would advise to maybe just kind of ignore the chat on, on the screen. And I just wanted to say that because I think this is a really good game. I think it's a special RPG. I think it's a special entry in Final Fantasy. And if you haven't played it, I think you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. And uh, I think you should go in as blind as possible because it is a really good story. I hope you enjoy this review. Like I said, it was fresh as soon as the game ended. So it might not be the most in-depth review, but you'll hear everything that I was feeling as soon as the credits roll, and I hope I see you at the next stream. I guess I will start with the RPG systems. Uh, this was a turn-based Final Fantasy game, but I thought it did turn-based combat really well. I felt like the pacing of the turn-based combat was really good, and, and to be clear, I played the international PS2 version. So I didn't even play the remastered version with like ways to turn off random battles. It does have random battles, super frustrating and there were there's definitely areas in the game where i feel like the random battles mess up the pacing because they're the encounter rate is turned up super high i think that it's done in certain parts of the game in between like after a boss fight or in like long stretches where i'm assuming that's where you're supposed to grind the game intends for you to grind it's a good idea to grind there these are good grind spots the encounter rate is turned up through the roof though and it can be super frustrating because in some of these areas there is some exploration but it's so tedious to explore because of the encounter rate being so high now i think it's a double-edged sword like i didn't enjoy it because i was trying to move at a quicker pace and i'm streaming so that that plays into it but i know that a lot of rpg players and jrpg players don't mind grinding and enjoy grinding and so I think that if you're one of those players that enjoys the grind and uh, you're not bothered by grinding and you choose to engage with those intended grind spots, I don't think it'll bother you the way that it bothered me. So I want to make sure that I acknowledge that. But it bothered me. It bothered me. Now, I know also that there are items and stuff that you can get in the game that can affect the encounter rate. Uh, but I didn't see any way to get those items until way 30 plus hours into the game. So if you're going to have items in your game to reduce the encounter rate, I would just like to see them a little bit earlier. You know, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Um, I felt like that messed up the pacing a little bit in certain areas for me. Uh, but as far as like the, the RPG mechanics of it, I loved the sphere grid the way that you get skills for your characters it kind of reminds me of the uh the I, what was it the the license boards or the job boards that was in uh final fantasy 12 zodiac age kind of reminded me of that where you have this grid and your character starts on the grid somewhere and you move through these different different grids uh which are like different vocations and you can move through them wherever you want to go and 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 pick up skills along the way um you level up through grinding uh in combat and getting xp it's called ap in this game uh i like it i really really like the way that uh that skills are done in this game and I know that there's two sphere grids as well, right? There's like your regular sphere grid where each character kind of starts in whatever like vocation or class the game kind of intended that um, that that character's role to be or whatever. Um, but there's also like a, a more advanced sphere grid where you kind of start in a neutral area on the grid and you can like take your characters in in any direction you want to and start to give you know characters that are typically intended to maybe be dps maybe you want to make them a healer in a second playthrough or something i think that's really cool so i love the way that they handled skills it's it's, a, it's coming from final fantasy 7 where i'm i'm moving around uh materia all the time 
I loved this so much more. I loved it so much more. And I felt like overall it was a pretty flexible system, especially because you get special spheres uh, at times that will allow you to, you know, pick up your character who's over here picking up all these like DPS skills and move them to where another character is. If you want them to get some partial skills from another job, you can do that. And I like that. It's not the most flexible or the most fluid um, like vocation mechanic or skill mechanic or build mechanic right in any RPG or any Final Fantasy, but I think it's one of the better ones for sure. Definitely. I definitely think it's one of the better ones. Um, there's not a ton of choice as far as dialogue choice goes in, in Final Fantasy, but doesn't bother me. This is clearly, you know how some games are designed more linear when you're, when you're talking about exploration, think about Final Fantasy 13 and think about how Final Fantasy 13 is very linear. Like you're, you kind of feel like you're going down guided hallways the whole time, right? There's areas that open up, of course, but a lot of people talk about like certain RPGs or just hallways, you know, they're, you're, you're very, um, they're very linear, right? They're not very open in terms of exploration. Some RPGs are like that when it comes to dialogue and like NPC interaction and things like that. Think of something like Skyrim or Fallout, right? That's way more open, right? Um, and then you have games like this where it's way more linear. Like this game is clearly here to tell you a very specific story. There's not a lot of dialogue choice involved in the game. And I was fine with that. One of the reasons that I was fine with that, one of the reasons it never bothered me, I never, I never felt like, oh man, I wish I had more choice. I wish I could say more things in conversations. I never felt that way because the writing for the most part was pretty good. I thought it was, I thought it was above average. I thought it was above average. And in the case of certain characters like Yuna and Auron, I think the writing was just top tier, honestly. Um, A tier, S tier writing. Um, and, you know, there were a couple of characters that weren't as strong, but for the most part, the story that this game wanted to tell, I was enjoying. I never felt like I needed more choice in like dialogue and stuff like that. Uh, there's, I like the way it handles gear. Uh, it's, it's more like a horizontal progression instead of a vertical progression with gear. Uh, you're, you're getting, you're getting weapons and then you're getting armor. And for the most part, it's, there's no stats that are assigned to weapons. So like this weapon is not clearly more useful than this weapon. Instead, it's like skills that are assigned to weapons and armor. So you'll basically like, you'll get armor or you'll get weapons and it'll have, you know, maybe three or four slots. Some of them can be open so that you can assign skills or it might already have some skills assigned to it. And then you're basically, as you're going through the game, you're switching out armor and weapons, not based on numerical stat values, but you're switching them out based on the skills that you want and like buffs and stuff like that that you want on your party at that time for that area. For instance, you might have armor that makes your character immune to lightning damage. You're in an area where a lot of lightning attacks are happening, so you might just switch out for that. It's not uh, it's, it's not the kind of game where you're just gonna find a weapon you like or armor that you like and stick with it throughout like most of the game. I personally think that's very frustrating in RPGs because I love experimenting with different uh, weapons and experimenting with different like accessories and armor and stuff. And there's not a ton of accessories and armor in this game. I think there's like one armor piece and one weapon piece, and that's pretty much it for equipping your characters. But I like the way that it's handled. I constantly found myself switching between certain weapons or gear, um, you know, and, and, and yeah, like you're saying, like it all kind of stays relevant throughout the game based on what skills are attached to it. I really like that. I really like that. So as far as RPG mechanics go, what I'm really trying to say is that this game for the most part is pretty linear, but it's well written. And uh, I think most of it is well designed. Uh, I, you know, it had pretty brisk pacing. I mean, we beat the game in what, like, what was, what would you say, 50 hours? Here, let me actually, let me actually uh, take a look. So we beat it in about 55 hours and that felt pretty good. It felt like, even though I complained about some of the pacing issues with the encounter rates, if you take that out overall, I think the pacing was good. There was a ton of story content. And even though this is back when like, when you would get like a CGI cutscene, it would be like maybe 10 seconds long. 
Remember when like cutscenes were, you know, you get like a five second cutscene of somebody falling down, dying, or a character being like, oh, and that was the whole cutscene, you know, and now cutscenes can be like four minutes long. But all of the cutscenes in the game were really, really well done, and uh, I enjoyed the pacing for the most part. It's pretty linear level progression. It's pretty linear uh, with like uh, with like RPG mechanics. I thought it was really good though. I thought it was really good. I liked it. Um, character design was really good. The the world design was really good. I loved all the areas of the world that I explored. You know, like it, it's typical Final Fantasy, right? Like, like, like that's something that most Final Fantasy games are really good at. Characters are interesting. They're not always written in an interesting way, but as far as design goes, and as far as the world that you're that you're in and that you're traveling through, I liked it. There was a lot of enemy variety, although I got really frustrated because it does seem like when you're in different areas, you're pretty much locked. You're like, there's some enemy variety there, but there's not a lot of battle variety. So what I want to say about that real quick, because sometimes the encounter rate is pretty high, is that you're encountering the same battle. So there might be a <clears throat> there might be a pool of 10 or 15 enemies in a given area, but every time you trigger a random battle, it's going to be one of like two battles or one of like three battles. It'll be the exact same three or two monsters, the exact same lineup over and over and over again while you're in that area. And so... I feel like you get a little bit of unnecessary repetition in that regard that can get a little bit frustrating. Um, but you know, again, overall, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, especially like I said, since it's not like a 100 hour RPG where you're stuck in these areas for like eight, nine hours at a time. So it didn't, none of it like ruined it for me. Boss fights were really good. Uh, for the most part, I think boss fights were pretty easy. Some of them uh, have gimmicks associated with them, and some of them have like boss mechanics, which I like. And uh, some of them can be incredibly easy, but only once you figure out the mechanics of the fight, which I like, especially as someone that enjoys ARPGs like Path of Exile, enjoys boss fights in, in, in Souls games, enjoys, you know, uh, boss fights in something like Diablo or, um, you know, uh, what, what, what's, 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 what's the new RP, uh, ARPG that came out? uh last epoch stuff like that like i enjoy boss fights that have little mechanics that you have to adjust for where you're dealing with certain buffs and debuffs and all of a sudden it's not about pure dps you know and all of the sudden characters that you haven't been using that often in boss fights are incredibly important because of skills that they have i love that they do stuff like that in this game and i really like the boss fights except for seymour i got tired of fighting seymour but I'm not gonna go into details with that. But yeah, incredible boss fights, good boss design, good boss mechanics. It wasn't until the very end that there was a big difficulty spike, I think, with pretty much the final boss, like the real final boss of the game. And that motherfucker, I hit a wall. I hit a wall with that boss fight. Now, I've had some people tell me that that is one of the hardest boss fights in any Final Fantasy game. It's one of the hardest boss fights in the franchise i don't know if that's true or not but the the last real boss fight of the game was very tough but it didn't feel unfair it just felt very tough very hard it felt like all of a sudden you hit a difficulty spike and i was getting slapped around i was getting slapped around but when i finally beat that boss chat i mean every, i mean it, it was the the adrenaline and the dopamine from it to figure it out and get through that boss fight incredible it's an incredible feeling it was a great boss fight it never felt unfair it, but it was it was rough yeah getting your strat figured out yeah getting your strat figured out was important uh i i think we can just go ahead now and talk about the story um because i think i've i think i've pretty much covered the things with the game design that people are going to care about the boss fights are great the world that you're exploring is interesting and fun. Battles are fun. It's turn-based. It's done really well. There's a lot of things that I like. For instance, I love the way buffs are handled. Uh, there's versions of buffs that affect the whole party. So you don't have to cast a buff on each person one at a time. 
which can be super frust frustrating. There's debuffs that affect the entire party you're fighting against. That's really important to me. I hate wasting three turns on buffing each person or debuffing each enemy. Um, pacing is good. Pacing is good. I do prefer, I do like ATB active time battles, um, you know, real time battle systems with ATB gauges. That's kind of still my, probably like my favorite. Uh, I, I, I do kind of really enjoy that a lot, but, but this, 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 this battle system was really fun. I never got super bored with it. I never, I never got bored or hated the battle system or got tired of turn-based. I only got tired of encounter rates being super high in certain areas. Um, but again, if you, if you play the remastered version of this, which I chose not to, because the remastered version, the characters' faces don't really have any have expression to them they their eyebrows for instance don't have movement i really like the facial expression in the original ps2 version and that's why i played the international version so i do want to say that there are features in the steam version and in the remaster version that are better that are that make the game way more accessible however i think that before you choose what version you play you should go on YouTube and look at cutscenes that are, you know, early cutscenes in the game that are remastered versus the original version because I think the characters have so much more expression in the in that original version and in, in the international version that I played. And because the cutscenes are so good and they're so emotional, I think that that's that's just that was just more important to me than having the the accessibility features, even though I really wish I had them. The story was great. I'll just go ahead and say the story was really, really good. Uh, it, it has, it doesn't have a super slow start. I think it has a pretty fast start actually. And then I think it kind of settles into a rhythm where you're meeting party members and you're learning more about this world that you're in. The, the, the pacing of the story I thought was really good done really well character development for everyone in your party is done really well i thought i think that the story stumbles a few area uh, uh, the story stumbles a few a, a few places in the middle primarily with titus i think one of my biggest complaints of the game was titus's voice acting did not hold up next to Yuna, in my opinion. No disrespect to the voice actor. This is 2001. The voice acting didn't hold up compared to some of the other characters, and his lines weren't weren't as well. So, like, not only did the voice actor, I feel like, kind of struggle with some of the material, but I also felt like some of the material that was given to the voice actor just was not very good. Some of the lines were not very good. But I think Titus struggled in the middle with some of his lines and some of his dialogue and some of the development for his character but the like i said l the stuck the landing at the end uh, titus's the end of his arc and titus's you know the performance of the voice actor and the cutscenes and the dialogue that was given to titus in the last you know hour or two of the game were all re done really 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 well and his his last couple of scenes in particular were excellent and overall I can forgive some of the areas where I felt like that character stumbled in the middle and it, it I think uh, I think another thing that highlighted any weaknesses with Titus is that Yuna was just fucking amazing though Yuna was the best character in the game by far to me the voice acting was incredible her lines and dialogue were incredible her development through the game was incre incredible uh, I, I loved the romance between her and Titus and how that developed through the game. This is one of the best romances in any video game I've ever played, I think. And uh, its resolution was done really, really well, in my opinion. So uh, overall, you know, I, I think I think that this is, a, you know, an incredible story. It, uh, I, I, I think it avoids like dumping a lot of exposition on you all at once. That's one thing I like. Um, I think it kind of paces out its reveals pretty, pretty well and its boss fights pretty well. I will say though, it, it loves to give you multiple boss fights back to back to back, 
which can be really cool or it can be exhausting depending on the type of gamer that you are. It does like to do that. It does like to hit you with like multiple boss fights. And so, uh, you know, that can be something that, that maybe wears on the stamina of some players. I didn't feel that way. I enjoyed it. But this the, the ending to the game was just incredible. I talked earlier, I don't know if I was recording when I said this, but I think that there are some games that are so, so good, and then they don't land the ending. They don't stick the landing, right? There's, there's so many games where the journey is excellent, and then you get to the ending, and it's just like they drop the ball at the very end. And what happens is that even though the journey was so good, it still leaves you feeling kind of icky, kind of kind of 50 50 on the game just because you know first impressions are incredibly important and so are last impressions last impressions are incredibly important game of thrones yeah this game leaves an incredible last impression incredible and so areas where the writing stumbles a little bit areas where where, where some of it doesn't land for me at the very end the way this game wraps up the final boss fights and the final cutscenes, especially with Titus and Yuna, they hit so hard. They're so, they're directed so well. I mean, even the camera angles are perfect. And the emotion in the characters' faces, are it's perfect. So, it it sticks the, the landing and, and it, it has such an incredible ending that it, it kind of washes away any reservations you have about the story or any criticisms that you have about the middle of it. Not that you forget it, but you forgive it, or I do, you know? I I, I was able to forgive it immediately. Um, yeah, I, I walked away from this game feeling incredible about the about the story and, and about what it offers and, and about the story that it tells. Man, just the, 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 the romance between Titus and Yuna, I think was really the star of the show. I think that was probably the, the single best thing about the game is that it handled this romance between these two characters just so well, so well. It never, it never like, it never overdid it at all. It never overdid it at all. It, 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 it drip feeds it at such a good pace and it, it just handled And it's not until the very end of the game that it really just you know there's there's the there's the one scene there's the one scene in the middle that we all know about right where like they kind of go all in on Titus and Yuna after this big build up and then at the end they just they they give you everything that you could ask for with, with that with that romance uh but Yuna I just think was incredible I think she's one of the best written characters of any game that I've played. She was done so well. Incredible performance and incredible character. Uh, great game. I think overall for me, that game was um, probably a, an 8.5 out of 10. That was probably an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Did you like 7 original or remake Rebirth more? Um, I, I can't tell you until I until I play that third game. The The OG is still untouchable for me. It was a very good soundtrack. Very good soundtrack. Uh, just, just a very good game. It was a very good Final Fantasy game. I mean, I would love to see a remake of this game. I would love to see a remake of it because I think that, I think the the things that hold this game back from being like a ten out of ten are all like, you know, limitations of hardware and software in two thousand one. Just being a product of its time. You know what I mean? just being a product of its time. This game didn't commit any real sins. <laughs> no no pun intended. This game didn't commit commit any any like real sins in my opinion. You know, um like I said it it stumbled with the writing so, some some places in the middle primarily with Titus. But the way it came together at the end I think made up for it. And I think that if this game were given a remake you know, you can expect that, you know, it, you know, it would have even more dialogue, more effort, a bigger budget. I mean, I, I would, ex I would expect it to be absolutely incredible if it ever got a remake. I would expect it to be incredible 10 out of 10. I don't, I don't think this game 
really did anything wrong wrong you know there's just some design flaws that i think are more of more a product of its time you know no 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 great sins what did you think of sin as an antagonist or like a threat i thought that uh sin was kind of interesting from the perspective of design and you know sin's place in like the lore of the world and uh yeah sin was a good metaphor but as far as like an actual antagonist it you know sin didn't really have any kind of personality sin was more like a um symbol it was a a lot of symbolism and i i feel like sin was a vehicle for a lot of um like symbolism that they were trying to get across and sin was a vehicle for uh other characters in the game other enemies other bosses other antagonists uh, I think that sin was used more as a vehicle for other things in the game. It was cool. It was different. You know what I mean? Like, all right, that's, you know, I, I, I like it because it's like, I don't need a Sephiroth in every single Final Fantasy game. You know what I mean? I don't need a Kefka in every single Final Fantasy game. You can, you can give me sin once in a while. You know, you can try, like, I think they did something different with sin. And, th and I think it was interesting. The way this game deals with the concept of, you know, father and son with, with Jekt and Titus, I, I found that to be interesting. And like with a lot of things with Titus, it didn't really get me until the very end, the very end, the, the very last few scenes with Jekt and Titus were just ugh, heart wrenching and I thought they were done really well not really sure why they decided to do such a hard pivot instead of a slower burn with that I, I was expecting like a slow burn there and they they do a real quick switch up on you uh but again it lands at the end it lands at the end and and it just like I said it, it just it hit me really really hard and I didn't expect it to so that was very pleasant that was a pleasant surprise for me because I, I didn't expect much of a payoff with the father-son story because I wasn't really getting pulled into it. It wasn't really working for me in the lead up, but the, the, the ending of it, it's like, all right, they got me. They got me at the very end. They got me at the very end. Anyway, this has been 30 minutes of me talking about Final Fantasy X. Ultimately, I thought it was a really, really good game. It's one of my favorite RPGs I've ever played. I would definitely, I would definitely encourage anyone who hasn't played it to give it a try. But it would definitely help if you're familiar with JRPGs of that era so that you kind of know what to go in for, what, what, what you're getting into. You're going to have random battles. There's going to be times where the encounter rate is through the roof. And I would suggest that if you don't have access to any features that allow you to skip or speed up the game, just flee if you don't feel like grinding just flee uh, the battle system is done well it's interesting to engage with it's fun the characters and character designs are great the story is great the love story is great the father-son story really comes together at the end I, honestly everything really comes together great at the end for me and uh it just left me with such a good positive feeling i think this is a great story i think this has got to be like a top five got to be a top like five or top three final fantasy games got to be up there